From the moment you turn your computer on to the second you shut it off, the operating system never stops working. Let me show you how it manages everything in between. Think of your computer like a car. The hardware is the engine, wheels, and body. But without a driver, it won't move an inch. The operating system is that driver. It controls when to start, how to run, and when to stop. From opening your favorite apps to saving files or connecting to Wi-Fi, nothing works without the OS. That's why understanding how it functions from the moment you power on until you shut it down is so important for anyone learning computers. Step one, booting process. The very first job of an operating system starts when you press the power button. This is called the booting process. Think of it like waking up in the morning. Before you start your day, your body checks everything. Eyes open, brain active, muscles ready. Similarly, when a computer turns on, a small program called BIOS, or UEFI, quickly checks if the hardware, like RAM, CPU, and storage, are working properly. If everything looks good, it loads the operating system from the storage into the RAM. Only after this process, your OS is awake and ready to take commands. In short, booting is just your computer's way of getting up, checking itself, and preparing to work. Step two, process management. Once the operating system is awake, its next job is to manage all the running tasks. This is called process management. Imagine your computer is a busy restaurant, the CPU is the chef, and the OS is the restaurant manager. Customers, apps keep placing orders. YouTube wants to play a video, your browser wants to open Google, and maybe a game is also running. Now the chef, CPU, can cook only one dish at a time. But the manager, OS, is smart. It quickly schedules the orders, gives each task a turn, and makes sure no one waits too long. This happens so fast that to us, it feels like everything is running at the same time. So, process management simply means the OS decides which program runs, when it runs, and how much CPU time it gets, just like a manager keeping all customers happy in a busy restaurant. Step three, memory management. After handling processes, the OS has to manage the memory. This is called memory management. Think of your RAM like a classroom with limited seats. Every app that you open is like a student entering the class. The operating system is the teacher who decides where each student should sit and make sure no one fights for the same chair. If the class is full but a new student, new app, wants to enter, the teacher may ask some students to step outside for a while. This is called swapping data between RAM and storage. This way, the OS keeps track of who is sitting where, gives every app enough space to work, and makes sure the memory is never misused. Without memory management, apps would crash into each other like students fighting for seats. Step four, file system management. Now that memory is managed, the OS also needs to organize all your data. This is called file system management. Think of your computer's storage like a giant library. The hard disk is the building, and files are the books. But if books are thrown randomly on the floor, no one can find anything. That's where the operating system acts like a librarian. It gives every book, file, a proper place, in shelves, folders, with labels, file names, and extensions. So when you save a photo, document, or video, the OS remembers exactly where it is stored. And when you need it back, the OS quickly fetches it for you. Without file system management, your storage would be total chaos and finding one file would feel like searching for a book in a messy, unorganized library. Step five, device management. Your computer has many devices, keyboard, mouse, printer, speakers, and more. But here's the problem. Each device speaks a different language. The CPU alone can't directly understand them. That's where the operating system comes in as a translator and traffic controller. Imagine a busy airport. Planes, devices, keep coming and going. But without an air traffic controller, there would be total chaos. The OS acts like that controller. It manages which device can send or receive data at what time and makes sure signals don't crash into each other. For example, when you press a key on your keyboard, the OS quickly translates that signal into something the CPU understands and then shows the letter on your screen. Similarly, if you hit print, the OS tells the printer exactly what to do, line by line. So, device management simply means the OS makes all your devices work together smoothly just like an airport controller keeps flights safe and organized. Step six, security access control. Now, one of the most important jobs of an operating system is security and access control. Think of your computer like a house. Inside, you keep your personal things, photos, documents, passwords, and projects. But if there's no lock on the door, anyone can walk in and take them. The OS acts as the security guard of your digital house. It locks the door with passwords or pins and only lets the right person enter. Not just that, it also checks what each guest can do inside. For example, a normal user may only see a file, but an admin can edit or delete it. This is called access control. 
And just like a guard keeps watch for thieves, the OS also protects you from viruses and malware by blocking unauthorized programs. So in short, the OS keeps your data safe, controls who can use it, and makes sure no intruder breaks into your system. Step 7. User Interface Okay, now comes the part we interact with the most, the user interface. Think of your operating system like a shop. The storage, CPU, and memory are hidden in the back, but as a customer, you don't go there. Instead, you just see the front counter where everything is neatly displayed for you. That counter is the user interface. It's the screen you see, the desktop, icons, windows, and menus. There are two main types, GUI and graphical user interface, where you click on icons, drag files, and use visuals, like Windows or Mac OS, CLI, command line interface, where you type commands in text form, like Linux terminal. For beginners, GUI is super easy, just point and click. But for advanced users, CLI gives more power and control, so the OS provides a user interface to make sure anyone, from a student to a professional, can easily communicate with the computer without worrying about what's happening deep inside. Step 8. Shutdown Process Finally, let's talk about the last step, the shutdown process. Imagine you are in a classroom after a long day. Before leaving, the teacher doesn't just switch off the lights and walk away. First, she makes sure all the students have left, books are packed, windows are closed, and then finally locks the door. In the same way, when you click shut down, the operating system doesn't instantly power off. It carefully closes all open programs, saves any unsaved data, frees up the memory, and safely disconnects devices like USB or hard drives. Only after everything is properly wrapped up, the OS gives the signal to turn off the hardware. This is why shutting down properly is so important. It protects your files, keeps your hardware safe, and makes sure your system is ready for the next startup. So let's quickly recap everything we learned today. First, we saw how the operating system starts with the booting process, then how it manages processes and memory. After that, it looks after files, keeps everything connected with device management, and protects us with security and access control. Then we explored the user interface, and finally, how the OS safely shuts down the computer. In short, the OS is like a manager that handles everything behind the scenes so we can use our computer easily, without any stress. And that's it. Now you know how your operating system works from the moment you turn on your device till it shuts down. But listen, this was just the beginning. I'm preparing even more mind-opening tech videos that will make you smarter than most of your friends. If you leave without subscribing, you'll probably miss them. And I don't want that for you. So do me a favor, hit that like button if today's explanation made things clearer, and subscribe right now to join our growing tech family. Because here, we don't just learn, we grow together. Trust me. The next video is going to blow your mind, and you won't want to be the one who hears about it late.